Hello, hello, hello. If you have a seat, take one. <laughs> thank you so very, very much. You know, I want to thank Commissioner McGuire from Ramsey County, Minnesota. Uh, you know, uh, the fact is that it's an honor to join all of you, and uh, I want to thank you for how far we've come these last three years, and I want to thank you. We have more to do, but with your help, we're making real progress in red counties and blue counties. I promise to be a president for all Americans, whether you voted for me or not. Well, together, no, it's okay. Together, we're making a big difference bringing this country together and not tearing it apart. Now, some of you know, I started my career as a county councilman. I, I ran for the United States Senate because serving a local official was too hard. <laughs> That's almost true. <laughs> When folks have a problem, they know where you live. They come knocking on your door. Not, not a joke, I know. Kidding aside, what you do really matters. It matters to people's everyday lives, to kitchen table issues. You're answering key questions for people's lives. Is my neighborhood safe? Is it going to get better? Will the bus get me to work on time? How about the school bus showing up for my kid? Will my kids have a good future in this hometown. Well, there are going to be jobs. That's what I fill my administration, why I fill my administration with so many who served in county government. Start with Vice President Harris. Tom Perez, a poor person in the White House, who wants to join you all permanently, I think. <laughs> all he does is brag about you. You think I'm kidding, I'm not. Another throughout my cabinet, they know what you do. The measure of success isn't how partisan how many partisan points you can score, but can you fix the problem? It's really no, it really is basic. Democrat and Republican, can you fix the problem? We all share the same belief. We're here to deliver results for families, for communities, for the country. That's why I've kept my commitment to leave no one behind, to rebuild an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, because when we do that, everybody, everybody does well. Look at the progress we've made together, and I mean it when I say we. I came to office, the pandemic was raging, and our economy was reeling. Counties nationwide face devastating budget cuts, but we turned things around. The American Rescue Plan provided $350 billion to state and local governments. That money put cops on the beat, teachers in the classroom, money to keep child care centers open, families in their homes, small businesses on their feet money directly to every single community in America. So all of you, all of you could decide how best to spend your money without having to go through the State House or your governor. They're not bad, but you know what you need. Then we passed the most significant investment in our nation's infrastructure in generations. Roads, bridges, railroads, ports, airports, public transit, clean water, high-speed internet, and so much more. The American Infrastructure Plan used to, you know, we used to be the best in the world in infrastructure. Literally, we were ranked number, ranked number one in the world. By the time I took office, America's ranked number 13, had the 13th best infrastructure in the world. How can you have the best economy in the world when you don't have the best infrastructure in the world? I don't know how that works. So today, we're on our way to leading the world again. Over 46,000 new projects announced. With jobs now, jobs for the next decade, in your counties, in your communities. You know, just like FDR passed the Rural Electrification Act to deliver electricity to nearly every home and farm in America, we're building affordable, high-speed internet for everyone in America. Because the internet is just as essential today as electricity was then. How's your county deal with telemedicine without it? How do you, I go down the list, I'm not going to take your time, but you know, it's consequential. Last month, I was in Wake County, North Carolina. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> Where we're investing $3 billion 
to connect the entire state to affordable high-speed internet by the end of the decade. We're doing that in all 50 states. We've already saved 23 million families as much as $75 a month in infrastructure bill, in their internet bills. It's essential for children to do their homework, small businesses to sell their products, folks to have access, as I said, to telemedicine instead of driving long distance to see the doctor. We're also replacing every poisonous lead pipe in America so everyone can turn on a faucet and drink clean water and not worry about brain damage for our children. One recent study shows that reducing the lead exposure for children improves students' test scores as much as reducing class size to from one -tenth the, for one-tenth the cost. I mean, that's a, that's a practical impact. But mainly, no kids should have to turn on a no parents have to watch your kid turn on a water fountain and know there's lead in the pipe and not worry, and worry about what effect on the brain it has. At the same time, we're making the biggest investment in climate change ever anywhere in the entire world. <laughs> I'm with many of you after devastating floods, tornadoes, wildfires, and hurricanes. We're going to keep working together to respond, to rebuild, and boost resilience and to extreme weather. My administration is also helping install rooftop solar to build a national network of electric vehicle charging stations. We're revitalizing fence line communities smothered by the legacy of pollution like where I lived in Claymont. We're promoting clean energy and industries of the future made here in America, made in America. What I didn't realize, and I've been around, I know I don't look like it, but I've been around a while. I do remember that. <laughs> but you know, there's, there's so much we're getting done. I signed the Chips and Science. Okay. <laughs> I signed the Chips and Science Act, which attracted $640 billion in private companies' investments that are building factories, creating jobs in America again. And there's an example. America invented the semiconductor. I may have said it last time I spoke, that little tiny computer chip about the size of my, the tip of my little finger. Everything from smartphones, dishwashers, automobiles, nuclear weapons, everything. All these things. Over time, we went from producing nearly 40 percent of the world's chips to less than about 10 percent. Now, semiconductor companies are moving back to America to produce. Back to your county. So folks never have to leave their hometowns to get a good job. They can raise a family. And by the way, you know, they're building these, what they call fabs, they're factories. You know what those, how much those factories pay? They pay about $110 a year, $110,000 a year. And guess what? You don't need a college degree to have that job. And all these companies tell me they're coming back because they have, we have the best workers in the world. When I got on a plane and went to South Korea, they said, what the hell are you, what the heck are you doing, Joe? <laughs> I said, I'm going to try to convince them to invest here. Why? Remember, we had the supply chain issues. We couldn't get these chips. Well, guess what? Samsung came and met with the president of South Korea. And all of a sudden, I asked the leader of the company, I said, why, why are we going to invest in America? He said, you have the best workers in the world. Number one. And he also said, it's the safest place in the world I can make my investment. Given half a chance. Think, think about this in practical terms. Given half a chance, American workers have never, ever, ever, ever let this country down, ever, when they're given a chance. Never. And I started to say, you know, we, uh, we, we had a — I didn't realize that there was a provision in the law back in the late 30s having to do with whether or not unions can organize and what limits they had and all the rest. But there was a provision also in that law. It said that when a president is given money by the legislature to spend on a federal project, he should hire American workers and build it with American products. Yeah. Well, guess what? That's what we're doing. That's why things are moving the way they are.
That's why we made historic investments. For example, we're expanding registered apprenticeships so people can get paid while they're learning out of their careers. For example, when I took office, only two states had registered apprenticeships for teachers. Now, more than 30 states have it. The American Rescue Plan also made one of the biggest investments ever in local public safety. All of you have done a tremendous job putting these resources to work, hiring more officers for accountable, effective community policing, supporting violence intervention programs to help prevent crime in the first place, and they work. Folks don't, <laughs> folks don't always hear about it. The fact is we're making tremendous progress. Violent crime rates are falling all across the nation, down nearly in every major category. Record declines in homicides. We also are investing billions in improving mental health services, which I know is another major priority. You know, after we, uh, the fellow who's running again, well, I, I, <laughs> after he, did not, he did not move on making sure that we dealt with vaccinating the American public. We ended up losing over a million people dead. A million people. A million. And the studies show that for every one of those who died, there are eight to ten significant others who are left behind. Brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, sitting down at a kitchen table with an empty chair. Folks, my top priority to me is to add, that's why I asked Dr. The Sur Dr. Vivek Murthy, Admiral Murthy, to be the Surgeon General, because to make mental health a, a, a national priority. We're expanding community clinics, mobile unit clinics, working to treat causes of addiction while cracking down on deadly fentanyl trafficking. Folks, we've spent months working on a bipartisan border bill that included the most humane, fair reforms in our immigration system ever. It also included the toughest set of reforms to secure the border ever. It was a win for the American people, a win for your counties. But some of my extreme Republican friends, and by the way, this is not your father's Republican Party. I don't mean to take, I'm not taking on all Republicans. I really mean it. The MAGA Republicans, a minority, but a powerful minority, they went out and they killed the deal. My predecessor said he didn't like it. It was a loss for him. We have to end the political games, folks. Who we work for. We work for the American people. And I'm going to continue making the case to them, the American people. Folks, and all my Investing in America agenda has ignited a manufacturing boom, a clean energy boom, a jobs boom. We're investing in all America, urban, suburban, rural, tribal communities. And it's clear we have the strongest economy in the world, nearly 15 million new jobs since I came to office. The longest stretch of unemployment under 4 percent in 50 years. Growth is strong, wages are, wages are rising, inflation is down. In fact, the costs have fallen from everything from a gallon of gas to a gallon of milk. We know prices are still too high because of what I call greedflation and shrinkflation. I'm calling on corporations to pass their savings on to consumers, for God's sake. We're making real progress. The recent Washington Post headline summed it up. Quote, this is the headline of the Post. Falling inflation and rising growth give the U.S. the world's best recovery, the world's best recovery. It's because you implemented what we did. You made it work. And folks are starting to feel it. You got a way to go yet. Consumer sentiment surged 29 percent in the last two months, the biggest jump in 30 years. Americans have filled a record 16 file for a record 16 million new business applications since I came to office. And every one of those applications is a sign of hope. We're just getting started, folks. We've got to keep moving. We have to defend our democracy. To all, to all the county electorate of workers in America, electro, ele election workers. Thank you. I never thought I'd have to say this to anybody, but thank you for your physical courage. Thank you for your courage and your service to your community. The idea that I ever thought
Did I D that I ever thought I'd be standing for over a thousand county officials and having to thank somebody for being an election worker because they're putting their life at risk? Something's wrong, folks. We gotta change this. We gotta change the attitude in this country. Let me close with this. These past few years, I've talked to folks all across America, in their communities, at their kitchen tables. They often tell me how back in 2020 they were down. They'd lost their business. They'd lost faith. And then the laws we passed and the work you did to make them work began to bring them back on their feet, creating new jobs, new businesses, a new cycle of hope. That's why when we see folks, when you see shovels in the ground, people going to work, I hope you feel the pride in what you've done, pride in your hometowns and making a comeback, pride in America, pride in knowing we can get big things done when we work together. That's America working together. That's what you do. And that's why I've never been more optimistic about our nation's future. We just have to remember who in God's name we are. We're the United States of America. There is nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we work together. So God bless you all. May God protect you. Let's keep going. We got more to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One more thing I forgot. I forgot to mention Newcastle County, Delaware. Where are all my five? Come on, stand up. Where are over there? God love you. Like I said, they know where you live. All right, thank you. Appreciate it.